Topping today's news, the Supreme Court orders airport workers back on the job. The latest on the increase in minimum wage, a hotel worker drowns in a freak accident, and law enforcement preventing minors in liquor establishments. Good evening, Bahamas. I'm Jarino Saunders. This is your JCN Evening News. Thanks for joining us. A court ruling has ordered hundreds of workers who staged a sick out at airports across the country on Monday must return to work. Minister of Labor Keith Bell telling reporters just before the weekly cabinet meeting Tuesday morning that an injunction issued by the Supreme Court on Monday deemed the industrial action of the airport, airline and allied workers union, the AAAWU, illegal. He says some people have returned to work this morning and expects full compliance from union members. And an injunction would have been issued to ensure that the individuals returned to work and the action was deemed illegal. Um, I'm pleased to report that while we do not have 100% of persons back to work, a number of the persons have reported to work this morning at the, on the 4.30 a.m. shift. And as it all stands, all operations at the International Airport uh, has um, returned to norm some degree of normalcy. BPSU President Kimsley Ferguson said Monday the issues are the expiring industrial contract that has been in place since 2018 and will expire again in 2023, along with funding for the family islands. Clint Watson, press secretary at the office of the Prime Minister, says Prime Minister Philip Davis met with the BPSU president on Tuesday morning and they have come to an agreement to prepare a proposal to be submitted to the airport authority executives for discussion and negotiations toward a resolution. Minister Bell says Director of Labor Robert Faxon has also been in communication with the BPSU president and that a meeting would be held today to discuss the issues. Minister Bell, while acknowledging the long-standing pressing issues of the airport, airline and allied workers union, is urging the unions to give the government their support. We ask all of the unions, um, all of the workers to continue to have confidence in the system, allow us to get through it. Uh, we all know that this is a very fragile time in our, in, uh, in our economy. And so we ask uh, for them to be, for everyone to be patient and allow due process to take its course. But we are pleased to indicate that from all indications, they're back to work and we're going to continue discussions with the unions. Minister Bell says he looks forward to having these matters resolved quickly and that the government wants to address all labor relations. As the Lyndon Pinley International Airport goes through day two of the airport workers' sick out in protest of long-standing grievances, Minister of Tourism and Aviation and Investments, Chester Cooper, that's the Deputy Prime Minister, gives an update on the situation at the Lyndon Pinley International Airport. Kale Campbell files this report. Monday's sick out at the Lyndon Pindling International Airport staged by airport workers did not have a good impact on the Bahamas economy and left everyone on the losing end. And that's according to Minister of Tourism, Investments and Aviation, Deputy Prime Minister Chester Cooper. Despite the contingency plan in place at airports across the country, Deputy Prime Minister Cooper described the situation as difficult, particularly the speed of processing due to the sheer number of passengers at peak periods. On Monday, he told reporters in the early hours of the sick out that operations at LPIA had minimal impact. On Tuesday, the Deputy Prime Minister confirmed that there was an improvement in operations as a, quote, significant number of workers returned to their posts, though he could not give an exact figure. Deputy Prime Minister Cooper also noting that a significant number of sick slips have been signed by local physicians for employees yet to return to work. He's hopeful that ongoing dialogue with the Bahamas Public Services Union President Kimsley Ferguson will result in the sick out ending as soon as possible. As a result of this action, uh, there are all losers. This is an issue of significance to the economy and to the tourism industry. Our reputation as a country, our reputation as a tourist destination, and the actions were not only illegal, but most unfortunate. It was disappointing that uh, we were not able to achieve the type of compromise and patience uh, from the union. Uh, suffice to say, we're moving forward. We've begun uh, reopened uh, dialogue and conversations with the president of the union. And our objective 
is to restore a level of normalcy to the airport, to the operations, and to facilitate our, uh, our tourists, as well as the traveling Bahamian public in a normal way. And that's what we are seeking to do uh, today and moving forward through the course of the next few days. The economic impact of the sick-out was significant to stakeholders making adjustments in facilitating stranded passengers who missed their flight, a collateral effect of the protest, according to the Deputy Prime Minister, who also provided an update to the media in wake of Supreme Court Justice Denise Lewis Johnson granting an injunction against the Bahamas Public Service Union, ordering a return to work immediately. We have been working along with the major hotels to ensure uh, that we smoothen the process for all of the people impacted. Uh, we've been talking with the airlines to ensure that the persons who missed their flights yesterday are properly facilitated today. The airport authority has identified the people who missed their flights and promised them expedited uh, processing through security today. So in terms of customer service, we're doing everything we can. The overall economic impact of yesterday's action uh, is perhaps a significant number, given that many people miss flights, given the impact on the jurisdiction, our reputation, whether it discourage uh, passengers from coming. Uh, that's something we will have to see over a period of time. time. When asked whether the government will have to compensate inconvenienced passengers, the Deputy Prime Minister says an assessment will be done to determine as much. He reiterated that this administration is labor-friendly and committed to a resolution wanting to move forward in harmony with workers. He says his mission as Minister of Aviation is to ensure a state of normalcy. Our priority yesterday was to ensure that all of our tourists uh, the impact on them was minimized. So at the end of the day, uh, I believe there were uh, some issues that we took care of. I don't want to speak to it now, uh, but the reality is that uh, the priority was to ensure that our tourists were well cared for. And we had a large contingent of tourism professionals at the airport uh, looking out for our tourists. And to say to the workers that we will guarantee that they will receive whatever they are legitimately entitled to receive. Uh, that is the government's commitment and we are working to ensure that that happens in the shortest possible time frame. Deputy Prime Minister Cooper says the Transportation Security Administration, who is currently conducting an audit at LPIA, is aware of the ongoing industrial action, giving assistance to the situation, especially during peak periods. He adds that they understand that such instances may occur. The Deputy Prime Minister says they will have to wait and see what impact the sick-out will have on the assessment. However, the Minister says he anticipates it will not be a significant issue to TSA. For JCN News, I'm Kale Campbell. Thanks for that report, Kale. The official opposition is standing in solidarity with the airport workers. Free National Movement leader Michael Pintard said the opposition stands with the workers who insist upon respectful tripartite discussions following the mass sick out of hundreds of airport authority workers on Monday. The airport airline and allied workers union, which falls under the Bahamas Public Service Union, lamenting outstanding funds owed by the government, as well as long-standing issues with its industrial agreement. Mr. Pintard says the FNM takes note of the current industrial unrest, suggesting that this matter is only one of many labor matters reaching a boiling point, calling on the government's remarks on helping public servants in their budget debate a PR stunt. Further slamming the Davis administration, the FNM leader called out Minister of Aviation Chester Cooper and says the minister told the public that the matter was remedied by a $10 million allocation that rested between the Ministry of Finance and the airport authority. Mr. Pintard calls on the Ministry of Finance to honor the commitment made and communicate transparently to workers if circumstances have arisen to prevent the payments promised. Touching on the Davis administration's recent travels, Mr. Pintard says the government needs to increase its focus on domestic matters, adding that the lifeblood of the Bahamian nation is tied to the maintenance of the safe and efficient passage of residents and visitors through our various 
ports, inclusive of our airports. He says Bahamian workers are entitled to timely, ongoing engagement with sincere, reasonable consideration and resolution of their concerns, and that the FNM stands ready to assist wherever possible to efficiently bring a resolution to this and any other industrial matter currently brewing. Meanwhile, workers across the country should be quite pleased as the National Tripartite Council, the NTC, has completed its recommendations on the increase in the national minimum wage. And that's according to the deputy chairman of the NTC, Labor Director Robert Faxon, who told the media that the council has formally submitted documents to the government to increase minimum wage in the country. He notes recommendations have been forwarded to the cabinet for discussion in the very near future. The, the, the recommendation um, will be uh, a smile on the face of many persons who fall into that category, and it will cause them to have greater bargain, um, buying power. Um, 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 we in the NTC um, believe that we came to an amicable compromise. Um, as was done in 2015 when the minimum wage was increased, um, there was not uh, all of the stakeholders had different um, recommendations. The employer, uh, the government, and the worker representative. In 2015, um, we came to an amicable resolution where we raised the minimum wage from $150 to $210. The similar approach was taken in this matter. We could not come to a definitive answer. But we came to an apartment figure. The current minimum wage in the country in the public sector is $238 per week. The national minimum wage stands at $210 per week. Director Faxon noting that before any announcement on the increase of minimum wage is made, they will first consult with all major stakeholders. I can tell you definitively that the Minister of, of Labor and, um, and this government has indicated that before an announcement is made on the minimum wage, they intend to vote for additional consultation. Um, that will include a consultation with a number of stakeholders, including the Bahamas Chamber of Commerce, um, the general public will have to be in, in, in advice of what the recommendations are. Um, um, academia wants some views from academia. We also want some views from major stakeholders, the Bahamas Financial Services Industry, for instance, the Bahamas Hotel Employees Association, um, and, and a number of those employer organizations that represents persons within that sphere. We, we know, um, based on statistical information, there are approximately um, 340,000 men and women in our workforce. We know that about probably 25% of those persons are impacted by the minimum wage. And so before, we, um, before the government takes a decision, the government wants to ensure that there is additional widespread discussion of quantity. While the Labor Director did not speak to what the Council has proposed, he says the public can expect a number of town hall meetings in the very near future as Bahamians would want to hear what the recommendations are. The alleged drowning of a 38-year-old female leaves police investigating the circumstances surrounding her death. The woman, a resident of Bacardi Road, met her demise around 4.22 on Monday afternoon. Police say a female employee was operating a golf cart at a vacation resort in Western New Providence when the incident occurred. She was taken to hospital by emergency medical services personnel where she succumbed to her injuries. In crime news, police seizing a large quantity of suspected marijuana on Grand Bahama on Monday night. According to reports, officers from the Drug Enforcement Unit shortly after 7 p.m. acting on intelligence went to an abandoned building on Butterfish Court, Carvel Beach. Upon their arrival there, observed a group of men gathered around a derelict gray 2000 Daihatsu Jeep. And as the officers approached, the men fled the area on foot. The officers gave chase, but the men made good their escape. Officers then searched the mentioned vehicle where a black duffel bag was found. Upon closer inspection, it was discovered to contain 26 vacuum sealed packages and four round packages of suspected marijuana. There was no arrest made in this incident. The suspected drugs were transported to the Drug Enforcement Office for further inspection or investigation rather. The suspected marijuana is weighed in at 30 pounds with an estimated street value of $30,000. Investigations are being continued. We'll take a break here and we'll be right back after these commercials.